Hey, what's up? My name is Mr. Hush, and welcome to my flipped classroom. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Self, what is a flipped classroom? Am I going to have to pull some Gabby Douglas stuff and do actual flips? I am not prepared for that. Well, rest easy, friends. Rest easy. Flipped classroom just means that a lot of time I would have spent talking about important detail type stuff in room 17 with you sitting there staring at me pretending to take notes furiously in your notebook that you would never look at again will now be done on a series of short video clips that you can watch wherever and whenever you want. Imagine all the much cooler, more fun, hands-on activities that we can do in our class time if we take care of some of this background information stuff on the video clips. Now, before we get started with our first one, and sort of to introduce how this will work a little bit, I'd like to give you a famous quote from the infamous rapper slash bullet absorber, 50 Cent. 50 Cent once said, see I talk a little fast, but if you listen a little faster, I ain't gotta slow down for you to catch up. Well, even though I might sometimes talk a little fast on these video clips, you don't have to listen a little faster. Because well, the amazing thing about video is that you can pause, rewind and replay as many times as you want. Plus you can go back and listen to all my hilarious jokes over and over and over again. No? Okay. Well then let's move right into our first topic. Map skills! Ooh, 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 Mr. Hodge, Mr. Hodge. My parents, they have a GPS in their car, so it just tells us where to go automatically, and I don't need to learn math skills. Hmm, you're wrong. The first thing we need to understand is that maps are not just to get from point A to point B. Although that is one use, maps can be used for a number of things. They can tell us all sorts of information about a place that we're studying. Also, it troubles me that you would rely so much on GPS for all your driving directions because those aren't always such a reliable source. To tell you more about why you shouldn't trust your directions to GPS all the time, let me go to a new segment I like to call Story Time with Mr. Hodish. Story Time. So this one time, my friend and I decided to go to a Bucks game in Milwaukee. Now the Bucks play at the Bradley Center in downtown, and I had been there a few times before, so I was pretty confident I could find the way. But just to be sure, I offered to print off some directions ahead of time, and you know, we, I also brought along my Wisconsin State road map with a zoomed in section of the city of Milwaukee, so we could help find our way too. My friend just said, We don't need that, we'll just use my GPS. So we set off from Milwaukee using his GPS as our primary tool of navigation and we exited the freeway about on the outskirts of the city limits and uh, we proceeded to drive through the worst neighborhoods of Milwaukee for the next half an hour because his GPS told us to. Moral of the story is, don't trust your GPS. You're learning map skills, so use them, apply them your life, please. So let's talk about three types of maps that we'll be encountering. Physical, political, and thematic maps. Physical maps tell us about the actual land and water in an area, and it often shows elevation and shows you where things like mountains, rivers, lakes, oceans, streams, deserts, etc. are located. These are showing things that are in nature, that were not man-made. This is the terrain, and a lot of times these will be colored with greens, yellows, and browns. Those colors often mean elevation, but it's easy to remember because those are more earthy tones for these physical features. Political maps show human-made boundaries. They show the divisions between countries, states, or other types of territories. If you see a map that's divided into a whole bunch of different colors and it looks like a rainbow peaked on it, it's probably a political map. See, Germany isn't really pink, Poland isn't really green, 
they just color them that way so you can tell the difference when they're right next to each other on a map. Thematic maps are the final type that we'll use. Time for the wild card. Thematic maps are sort of the catch-all wild card category because they can be about pretty much anything. They can show population, they can show resources, they can even show who says soda and who says pop to describe their sugary carbonated beverages. No matter what kind of map you're using, there are five main things that you should look at when you read any map. They're called the five map basics. Let's go through them right now. The first map basic is the title, and that one might seem pretty obvious. You've all used titles before. I mean, that's what tells you what you're about to read when you open a book. What? You don't read books? <sighs> okay, let's try this again. That's what tells you what you're about to open when you get a new video game. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Title on a map works the same way. It tells you what the map has in store for you. It tells you what you can expect. So that's the number one thing we should look for. The second map basic is the legend or the key. Now this is usually a box that you can find in the bottom corner of the map. That box will usually have pictures or symbols that you can find throughout the map and those pictures and symbols have a little description written next to them. Those descriptions tell you what those pictures and symbols mean when you see them throughout the map. The purpose is for the map maker to not have to write out every single thing on the map. They can use little symbols and give you that legend or key to let you know what they represent. The third map basic is a compass rose, which may have any number of points labeled with different directions such as north, south, east, and west. Maybe a fancy schmancy compass rose and have northwest and northeast and southwest and southeast too. Or it could be a really bare bones compass rose and just have one arrow pointing north. No matter what kind of compass rose it is, it gives you a hint on what the directions are. Even if it just points at north, you can figure out the rest based on that. But direction is kind of an important thing to have on a map, so every map should have a compass rose. The fourth map basic is a scale. Now this scale doesn't weigh anything, but it is used for measurement. What we're measuring here is distance. Now maps tend to be very small representations of much larger areas. So what a scale does is tells us how far really long distances are, like miles or kilometers, and breaks it down into smaller distances like centimeters or inches, so it can actually fit on a paper. The fifth and final map basic is not always found on each map, but it is nice to have. It's called a locator map, and surprise, surprise, it helps you locate where the area on your map is in a larger region or a larger area. For example, if you had a map of Europe, it might have a locator map of the entire world and show you where Europe was in relation to the rest of the world. That way you know what's beyond your map. The things we've talked about today with map skills are going to be very important through the rest of the year. If you can use these tools to learn how to read and analyze maps more effectively, you're well on your way to having a successful year in geography class. It might even help you make your own maps, which is actually one of the things we're going to do next. But for now, go study. And until next time, bye-bye.